Good morning, First United Methodist Church of Orlando. It's great to be here with you on this Wednesday, April 14th. We are in the season of Easter. So Easter is not just one day, but it's actually a season of um, celebrating the resurrection, celebrating the good news that Jesus Christ um, is alive, uh, that he has overcome the powers of sin and death. Uh, we proclaim that now, uh, today, and in the coming days and weeks in this season. So it's still appropriate to say he is risen. He is risen indeed, um, and we celebrate that. Here at First Church, we are uh, continuing to live into phase five of our reopening plan. Uh, so we have resumed our, I guess, normal, if you can call it that, schedule of 930 modern worship in the Contemporary Worship Center upstairs and then our 11 o'clock traditional service in the sanctuary. Uh, for the time being, we're asking folks to register for these services, primarily so you know what the capacity of the room is and that we're trying to uh, be really intentional about uh, making sure we have plenty of space in the, in the rooms to spread out and to practice social distancing. Uh, you can register for these upcoming worship services on the church website. There will be a link to it in the church email newsletter, and as well as also it's included in posts on the church Facebook page. Uh, we invite you to, to do that, uh, to help us plan ahead and to make sure that we can space everybody out. For these upcoming services, we would love to have greeters and ushers uh, there to welcome folks and to be hospitable uh, to our people that are part already part of our First Church community, but as well as new folks uh, that have found us and are, are coming and checking us out. Uh, we would love to have friendly faces to greet them and to uh, help them find where they need to go on our campus. So you can sign up to serve as an usher or a greeter on the church website and in the church email newsletter as well. Our children's and youth ministries are continuing to find ways that we can be together and minister together. Children's Sunday School has resumed, as well as Children's Worship Arts Program Ignite. Those meet on Sunday mornings. Uh, and again, we're asking uh, parents to pre-register your children so we can plan ahead for their arrival. Youth group meets on Sunday evenings at six o'clock on the third floor. And uh, with all of these groups, we're mindful about, you know, everybody wears masks, just like uh, we ask everybody coming to worship, anybody coming for any uh, ministry event on our campus, we wear masks, we practice social distancing, uh, we're mindful about um, even groups that are practicing social distancing, how many people are in those groups and how we can space out um, appropriately. Um, and, you know, we're trying to care for the physical health of people, but also their spiritual, emotional, and um, kind of holistic health. Uh, so help us do that um, together. For those of you that are not yet ready to be back in person, that's okay. We'll continue to stream our services and offer those online. Um, some of them are going out live as the service is happening, and some of those uh, will be posted later in the day. Uh, but we want to be able to offer that to folks and continue to reach out and connect um, with people that aren't yet ready to be back in person. And when you are ready, we're here and we're looking forward to seeing you and to being in worship with you. So I'm coming to you from my office and uh, intentionally with my door behind me. I know this is probably not the prettiest of backgrounds, um, but I'm, I'm an extrovert, I'm a people person, so I like people. I, I Most of the time my door is open unless I'm on a Zoom call and I feel like I need to you know, not have everybody up and down the hallway uh, hearing the conversation on the, on the Zoom. But uh, most of the time my door is open and uh, would love for people to, to stop in and wave, um, say hi and things like that. As more people are on our campus during the week, it's great to see those faces and to hear voices and to not feel so alone. But sometimes we wanna close the door, right? Maybe we have to focus and really get something done. <laughs> uh, maybe we're having a private conversation and uh, we want to honor people's confidentiality and close the door so that people just can't eavesdrop or overhear information that they shouldn't hear. Sometimes we close a door uh, because we're trying to maybe shut out the world, uh, the people around us, perhaps it's distracting to us, or um, we're just not in a place that we can deal with it. 
you and I, we're human beings, and so sometimes we wake up and we're grumpy. We wake up on the wrong side of the bed. And so sometimes we, we come into a room and close the door. So like, you know, we're, we're not further um, irritated by the world or the people around us, but it's also so that we don't say or do something that could be hurtful uh, to the people. Um, I always say sometimes when I'm in a mood like that, I'm like, I'm not fit for human consumption. Like other people should not be around me right now. Um, and so a closed door helps that, right? It can be a boundary, uh, protecting relationships and, and helping us to do no harm to each other. Sometimes we close a door and we hunker down we kind of separate ourselves from others out of fear. Maybe we're worried or we're anxious. And so it's just what's happening outside of the doors, what's happening beyond us, it's just too much. And we just can't take it. And so we come in here and this is sort of a, a way to protect ourselves um, from situations or people that are out there. The disciples did that. After uh, they heard the news that the tomb was empty, uh, and after Peter and John had run to the tomb to see it for themselves, and they heard Mary's words that, um, you know, an, an angel, a messenger had appeared to her and told her that, um, that Jesus was alive, that he wasn't dead, that his body wasn't there. Um, and even after in John's gospel, Mary actually encounters the risen Jesus. Um, he calls her by name and she recognizes him for who he is. Um, even after all of that, the disciples were fearful. They were worried. Um, they were fearful of the Jewish and the Roman authorities. Um, they were fearful for their lives and for the lives of their family members. Um, but I think they were also probably just freaked out <laughs> by even this news about Jesus and what does this mean and uh, you know what does that mean for us and so John's gospel tells us that when it was still the first day of the week that evening while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities Jesus came and stood among them he said peace be with you after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they aren't forgiven. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. So something like the disciples being in a room behind closed doors, that feels like maybe that's a very minor detail. Like I feel like that's something that it's easy to read over in scripture. But for some reason that phrase stuck out to me um, a few weeks ago when I was reading it. And maybe it's because we've been at home a lot over the past year. Um, there were many weeks that we were uh, kind of told to shelter in place as much as possible, um, where many folks were working from home and really only those that uh, workers that were essential, uh, workers in various capacities, they were out and, and in their workplaces. But for a lot of people, it was a kind of a very rapid transition to figuring out how to work from home. And so we spent many weeks and months um, behind closed doors um, away from family members and friends, coworkers, neighbors, um, our church community, away from kind of our normal patterns of life, and even just the strangers that we would interact with at the grocery store or in various places, we weren't doing a lot of that. We were all behind closed doors. And we did that because we were afraid, afraid of COVID, of coronavirus, afraid of getting sick ourselves, afraid of um, maybe having the virus ourselves but not experiencing symptoms and passing it on to somebody else. Um, we were behind closed doors um, in order to care 
for our community to care for other people um, to not overwhelm our hospitals and our medical clinics with sick people um, so there was this tension we were behind closed doors because we were afraid but it was also a measure to to try to do some good uh, to do what we could do um, in the face of coronavirus and staying at home was something that we could do uh, to help in this regard. So the disciples, they're behind these closed doors. And what happens? Jesus appears in their midst. Um, we don't really know exactly how that happened, uh, but Jesus showed up even behind closed doors. The, the closed door, the locked door was not a barrier that kept Jesus out. Friends, that's good news. There's no earthly human barrier that we can uh, set up, <laughs> um, that we can create that keeps Jesus out. Our God is always a God who is showing up in our midst, who's meeting us wherever we are, who's meeting us in situations where we're afraid or even when we're uh, trying to do something good. Jesus shows up. And what does Jesus uh, say to his disciples when he's in that room? He says, peace be with you. And perhaps this peace is, you know, peace, like a good feeling, like let's, you know, let's, uh, let's have good feelings between one another. But it means more than that. Uh, when Jesus shows up and says, peace be with you, he's showing up and extending to them God's wholeness. Jesus is blessing them with wholeness um, that comes from God. It's almost as if how God created in the beginning, where everything was whole and perfect, that's the same kind of wholeness that Jesus is offering to his disciples in a place where they're afraid, in a place where they're uncertain, in a place where they're separated uh, from the world around them and they're hunkered down. Jesus says, peace be with you, wholeness be with you. That's a good word. Because I don't know about you, but I need wholeness. I need wholeness that doesn't come from me, but comes from God. I need to be made whole myself, but also relationships, friends and family members, also just our, our world around us. There's so much division and uh, violence, hatred and skepticism and fear fear of others, fear of what's happening in the world. We need wholeness. We need to be made whole. And that's what Jesus is offering to his disciples in that moment. When they saw Jesus, they were filled with joy. And Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. So again, he offers them, he blesses them with peace, with wholeness, with shalom, with um, everything in proper relationship, everything in proper harmony and um, connection with each other, being made one. Um, that's what Jesus is offering to them in that moment. And he says, as the Father sent me, so I am sending you. The disciples, they didn't just stay in that upper room behind closed doors. It was okay for a time being. It was okay to kind of take care of themselves, to wait for further instructions as to what to do, uh, to uh, kind of perhaps prepare themselves, to strengthen themselves, um, to perhaps pray and get into better moods and to have less fear. Like That's okay, sometimes we need uh, those moments where we hunker down but we're not to stay like that because Jesus shows up and he says I am sending just as the father sent me I am sending you and here in John's gospel Jesus doesn't wait um, until Pentecost uh, for the gift of the Holy Spirit uh, here in John's gospel it says he breathed on them and said receive the Holy Spirit so in that same moment where Jesus is offering wholeness uh, to his disciples he's also equipping them and gifting them with the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's that power of the Holy Spirit that will fuel them and empower them and strengthen them to go out from that place 
uh, to perhaps confront their fears and their anxieties. Uh, they don't have to do that alone, but they do that strengthened by and with the Holy Spirit. And he sends them out into the world uh, to do the work of forgiveness, uh, to forgive perhaps things that have been done to them, but to also practice the ministry of forgiveness, um, cultivate that in, within their own relationships, but also to share that with the world. Friends, I don't think that message is just for the disciples some 2,000 years ago in a room. I think, no, Jesus still shows up to us today uh, behind closed doors even uh, when we are in our places of fear and worry and anxiety when we feel alone um, when we have disconnected from other people God shows up and is in our midst God shows up and still says to us peace be with you be made whole God so shows up and breathes into us the breath of life, breathes into us God's spirit that empowers us, um, gives us the courage and the strength um, to go out into the world, to do the work that God has called us to do, to do the work of forgiveness, to do the work of sharing the good news um, of Jesus, to share the abundant life and the good news of wholeness and peace uh, that God has for each and every one of us. You and I are equipped and called to do that. Will we receive the Holy Spirit? Will we go from the room? Will we leave our locked doors and go? Let's pray together. Gracious God, we give you thanks that you are a God who still shows up with us today that you are still in the business of giving us uh, your peace, of making us whole, of making us one with you, one with each other, one with ourselves, and one with all of creation. God, may we embrace that wholeness, um, that abundant life you have for us. May we claim it today. May that wholeness um, begin to do a new work within us of um, restoring what has been broken. God, may that wholeness, uh, that abundant life, empower us and strengthen us to go out into the world to forgive, to go out into the world and to proclaim the wholeness that you have for us and that you desire for all creation, but also to like, roll up our sleeves and to get our hands dirty and, and helping to make the world whole again, to repair what's broken, to restore um, what has been disconnected. God, may it be so for me, may it be so for all those who are watching uh, this devotional today. As we figure out how we recover from COVID and, and move into a a new season um, of life, whatever that may be. God, inspire us with ways uh, to leave our closed doors and to go where you are sending us. It's in the name of Jesus, our risen Lord, that we pray. Amen. Thanks, friends, for being with me today. I hope you have a wonderful Wednesday. I uh, hope to see you uh, in church in person or to see uh, your names online as you uh, comment and, and let us know that you're watching online. Um, if there are ways that we can continue to minister with you, to care for you um, in this season, please reach out to myself or Pastor Vance. You can email us. Uh, you can contact the church office, and we'd be happy to connect with you and to see how we can support you and care for you in this time. Go in peace. May the peace of God be with you. Amen.